We are live, right, everybody? Heck yeah. Welcome back to Crutchfield Live. I'm your host, JR. I should turn the music down now. This is a uh, speaker we're going to be listening to soon. You're hearing our theme song on it. We're going to talk about that here in just a minute. Uh, so welcome to another Crutchfield Live. Uh, it is Thursday at 4 o'clock, and the plan is to, uh, to start to get a little bit more consistent about being here live to talk with you uh, every other Thursday at four o'clock. We've got all the people in the room sort of scheduled. We've worked everything out. So we should be able to do this for you on a pretty regular basis, which makes us very excited to get to talk to our Crutchfield customers, our viewing public uh, about this stuff that we, uh, we love so much. Car stereos, home stereos, TVs, cameras, drones, anything we sell here at Crutchfield, we would love to talk to you about it. Uh, and as long as you're watching, live on Facebook or YouTube. We'd love to interact with you here. Go ahead and drop us some lines, uh, just shout outs to say hi. If you've got questions about Crutchfield gear, literally anything, I will take it. Uh, and we will be glad to uh, try to address your question here live in the show. Obviously, if you've got questions about the stuff we're gonna talk about today, that'd be fantastic as well. Uh, so questions and comments, uh, send them on in. Uh, this, uh, we have been doing Crutchfield Live now for a while. The past several episodes are also available in an audio format. So if you're interested in Crutchfield the podcast, you'll be able to hear some of our recent Crutchfield Live episodes in an, just an audio format there. Just go to crutchfield.com slash podcast to check those out. They're, of course, available wherever you get podcasts as well. We are currently busy working on season three of Crutchfield the Podcasts, where we're going to have long-form interviews with a bunch of really cool Crutchfield employees talking about the Crutchfield gear they loved so much, they bought it. They used their employee discount, they bought it, they took it home, and they want to tell you about it. Uh, and so it's a lot of fun making Crutchfield the Podcast. That's also happening here as well. Uh, today's topics for Crutchfield Live, we've got three major topics to talk about. First uh, will be Sonos and the Sonos Move and the Sonos Roam. I have them here on the desk with me. We're going to bring in uh, River, who has uh, been an advisor here at Crutchfield for a while. Uh, she has had some personal experience with these products. She's taken them home, and uh, we're going to get into some Sonos talk here in just a little bit. 
We're also going to bring in Buddy. He's an advisor in our Spanish International Department. He's going to tell us about the audio upgrade he did in his 2020 Honda Velister, or as I like to say, his, his Honda, sorry, not Honda, Hyundai Velociraptor. So I can't, I can't speak today. So perfect. Uh, and so we're going to talk to him. He did some really serious audio upgrades, amplifiers, speakers, processors, cables, all that stuff. Uh, and so we want to hear about why he chose what he chose and uh, how much he likes it. There's an article. We'll get to show you some of what he did. And this guy right here is a new turntable from Duel, uh, who's been making turntables for quite a long time. And uh, we're going to bring in Eric, who has uh, had some experience with these, gotten some firsthand hands-on experience with some of our new Duel turntables. Before we get into any of that, though, I want to talk about the speaker you were hearing uh, playing music while we were coming into the show. I'm going to turn it up again so you can kind of hear it. It's that speaker in the background. That's my band. That's our theme song. Uh, it's the band big.com if you're interested. Um, uh, so I'm going to turn it down so I can talk about it. It's got lights on it. It's got a remote control. What is the deal with it? Uh, it is... A, uh, Eco X Gear Sound Extreme SEB26, uh, and it's pretty sweet. I've got this remote control. I can turn the lights on and off. Uh, I don't know what happened there. Oh, yeah, okay, good. See the lights are on and off. What is this? It is a sound bar for your ATV or your golf cart or your boat, uh, four-wheeler, stuff like that. Uh, and we sell a bunch of these. We've got a bunch of companies that have been making these types of bars now. Uh, and, you know, if you're going out in the woods and four-wheeling and stuff, it, doesn't it make sense that you would want music with you when you're doing that? Of course it does. But uh, one of the issues with is installing a bar. Where do you put it? Do you put it on your roll cage? How do you get power to it? You have to run power wires to your battery, things like that. This actually solves a bunch of those issues. Uh, it comes with a bunch of different mounting brackets, so it's going to work well with a lot of different ATVs and golf carts and things like that. Uh, it's got a lot of speakers in it, uh, a whole bunch of uh, speakers, eight marine rated speakers. It's got side mounted woofers. It's, uh, by all accounts, plays very deep, full, rich sound. You can really crank it up. There's like 50 watts of power built in. It's got lights, as you just saw. It lights up. You can even have those lights dance with the music. And uh, all of that is battery powered. Uh, so this is the bar itself right here, the SB, uh, what was it again? SB, SEB26. Uh, and that right there in this picture here, that's a battery. That battery, uh, fully charged, will last about 20 hours at a normal volume. Of course, if you're out four-wheeling and you're cranking your music, you're not normal, right? So you're not listening at normal volumes. You're cranking it, and you're probably going to get about four hours of battery life at top volume with this guy. Uh, the battery just comes uh, out of it. You charge it at home, so you leave the bar attached to your, your vehicle, take the battery out, charge it up, put it back in, go out on the road, and, of course, you can play music via Bluetooth from your phone. Uh, and if you're, if, 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 you know, most likely you're going to want to make sure your phone is protected from the elements in a case like that. So you're going to take your phone, put it in a cubby or your pocket to keep it from getting wet or dirty. And once you got music playing, you can just use the remote control to turn the lights on and off, turn the music on and off, go to the next song, things like that. So uh, it's uh, battery powered, so easy to install. Just mount it, charge the battery, connect it to your phone, and you're ready to have music playing wherever you go in your ATV, your golf cart, whatever it is. Uh, this is now uh, something we sell. It's in stock. It's going to be in an upcoming catalog, so there'll be a nice write-up about it. And, and I'm already noticing here that we've got three customer reviews already written about it, uh, getting either, either four or five stars uh, out of five from our customers. And one of them even posted a picture of this thing mounted in their golf cart. Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit. You can kind of see it right here mounted to the uh, awning in the top of their golf cart. So uh, that's a perfect way to do it. Uh, the lights will light up the inside of your golf cart. So it looks like you got a party going on. And then of course the music is there because who, uh, who wants to party without music? Um, so that is the uh, Eco X Gear Sound Extreme SEB26. And I just wanted to, it's a brand new thing. We're highlighting it in a cup, upcoming catalog. And I thought that seems like something we should talk about on Crutchfield Live. So if you've got any questions about that, hit me up. Hey, just wanted to check real guys. I'm not seeing any comments from YouTube. Is that because none have come in yet or because my link isn't working? I just want, all right, just double checking. Thank you, everybody.
Um, before we get to our first guest, River to Talk Sonos, I've got a poll question for you. If there's anybody out there watching, that'd be great if you want to answer this poll question because we want to do these uh, Crutchfield Live things more often and we want to know what you would you like us to talk about. Uh, so that's the question today. What topics would you like us to cover in upcoming Crutchfield Live shows? We've got four choices for you. Uh, and then, of course, if you don't if you don't see what you want us to talk about in these four choices, just post a comment, uh, and that would be fine too. So, TV stuff, home audio gear, car audio gear, cameras like those are kind of four major categories of stuff that cover most of what we sell here at Crutchfield. And if you'd like us to focus in any one of those areas, we'd love to know that. If there are specific products or technologies you want us to in, to talk about on a live, we would love to know that as well. So go ahead and drop your uh, vote in on the poll. A specific comment in the questions in the comments uh, here on YouTube and or Facebook. And uh, we will take all of that into consideration for the future. Uh, and uh, I think we're ready to bring in our first guest. River, you ready to come on in? River is here to talk about Sonos. Sonos. How are you today, River? Doing well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, thank you for doing this. Uh, you are, you've been here for how long? How long have you been at Crutchfield? About five years. Five years ago was when you went through sales training with mm -hmm. me. Yep. And uh, so you were an advisor for a long time. Yes. So you talk to hundreds, thousands of our customers. Yeah. And uh, now you have moved into a totally different department. I did. And you don't hardly talk to anybody now, mm -hmm. right? You are just uh, knee, knee deep in spreadsheets in the accounting department. Spreadsheets and counting beans, no. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, so in your time on the phones with, crust, with our customers, did you get a chance to talk about Sonos, like wireless whole home music yeah. systems like that? All the time, probably one of the bigger topics that we always this or that folks wanted to discuss yeah you know, it's been growing every year it seems to become mm -hmm. a, a, a more in-demand type of product as more people realize the power of a Sonos system yes. in their house and how you can have speakers all over the all mm -hmm. over the rooms connected to your TVs your existing stereos your speakers outside wherever you want music you can kind of do it right and have control of it from the app on your phone now, when you were talking to customers, uh, did you find it was helpful to have actually have used Sonos products themselves? Yeah, I mean, especially when talking about just compatibility, setup, all of that was definitely very helpful to have used it. And home. so do you like have a Sonos system at your house? I currently don't have a Sonos system. I did, but then I ended up giving it away. Um, you gifted it to someone I else? I gifted it, I did. I You're gifted spreading it. the love of Sonos? I gifted it. Yes. Um, but we also have this cool thing at Crutchfield called the Lending Library, mm -hmm. uh, which allows advisors to borrow products that we sell, uh, take them home for a couple of weeks, experience them, use them, uh, and then send them back. And then we, you can write a review about them and use that experience when you're talking with customers to be able to tell them, even if you don't own the product, you've used, used it. it. At your home, like in, like as if you did own it for a little exactly. while. Technically, you did own it for a little yeah, while. I did. Just a little bit. Um, so which one did you get? What we have on the desk here is the Sonos Move, Move. and the Sonos Roam. Which one did you get, or both? The Move. The big one, mm -hmm. which was the first Sonos portable speaker that they came out with. Yeah. Uh, why did you choose that one? I think, well, at the time, because it was the only one out, I believe, because it was a couple years ago, that the Roam was not available, uh, but really just for sound. I wanted to see how, and. They really helped me with the durability aspect of it, how robust it is. And I was like, I'm gonna give this a try. I took it to the beach. Nice. Yeah. So you took it to the beach. Yeah. Uh, this one has Bluetooth. So mm -hmm. when you're out of the, some, a place like that, put it in Bluetooth mode and you can just make it play music from any phone. Yep, and it works great. And uh, it's got a nice carrying handle on the back. You just grab it out of your charging yes. thing at home and yep. take it with you and you can go anywhere with it. Yeah, and the sound was fantastic. I was completely blown away by it. I wasn't expecting it to sound as good as it did. Right? Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of Sono speakers, most of them plug into the wall for power, mm -hmm. right? And there's right. speakers roughly that size. There's a little bigger one. There's a little bit smaller ones. Uh, and this compares with like uh, some of those powered speakers from Sonos. Yeah, definitely. And it's got the battery, mm -hmm. so you can take it around with you. Yep. Did you, did you move it around your house at all? Like I know you went to the beach, but did you use it like off of the charging cradle around the house. Absolutely, especially when doing housework or if I had friends and family over, um, kind of moving it around where I went. Uh, and it's just, it's great because it's, like they say, music with no hassle. 
Yeah. yeah. So that's one of the cool things we wanted to talk about. I'm starting to see some comments coming okay. in. I'm going to break away for a second. All right. Got some shout outs. We got John Vargo is here. Uh, Mr. Y. Lohalo is working. Appreciate you taking some time while working to watch us today. <laughs> Swiper1911, uh, Marco, John Vargo said Polo, a guy that got, you guys got a good game going, that's awesome. Uh, we got uh, Tamu and Scott says Home Audio, that's, a poll, that's an answer that's to our one. poll question. John Vargo says, do you guys sell those diffusers on the wall behind you? I assume he's talking about these panels up here mm -hmm. that are part of our video studio. Uh, do you want to, yeah, Phil, you want to come on in? We're going to bring in one of our All video right. uh, specialists. He's the guy that like ordered those and yes. put them up in the studio. Do we sell those? So those are from GIC or G-I-K Acoustics. They're their um, impression series. We don't sell those, but we do sell... Oh, he is taking Ooh, the video studio yes, apart, yes. everybody. <laughs> These uh, really impressive panels from Acoustical Solutions, you can find those on our site. They're alpha sorb panels. Yeah, so you can hang those on the wall. They will absorb frequencies so that a lively room with lots of uh, reflections or reflective surfaces, will it'll deaden that sound, flatten it a little bit, so, it would, so your living room doesn't sound like a humongous bathroom, right? So you can make your home theater sound tight and accurate and all that stuff. Yep. Great question. Thank you very yeah, much, John. Uh, Tamu and Scott says, Sonos is great. It's fantastic. One of the things I love about the concept of having a Sonos speaker that does not need to be plugged into the wall, right, which is what the Move and the Roam can do, is that even, yeah, of course you can take it on, like, to your beach or camping or anywhere you go, but even just around the house, if you take that off the charging cradle, you don't necessarily need a Sonos speaker in every room of your house and outdoors on the back porch, on the front porch. Right. You've got Sonos in all those zones if you just carry this guy around with you. Exactly. Did you do some of that? Oh, yeah. Um, and then it was nice, too, because uh, with, well, the sound bar, but pairing it with the TV and having that work together and then taking that with me outside. So you did that? Yes. So, like, you can, uh, and we've actually got a Sonos yeah. beam here in the background. I'll show you that here in a minute. We're playing a cool video showing how beautiful Sonos speakers are. Uh, but you can have a Sonos speaker hooked up to your TV, so it's like a sound bar. Mm -hmm. And so you, whatever, whatever you're watching on TV, playing on that sound bar, your TV sounds great now. Yes, it does. And because your TV is connected to the Sonos system, Audio from your TV is now like a thing you can play on other sp Sonos speakers within the same Sonos network. Yep. Didn't miss a beat. So, like, give me an example. What were you watching that maybe you wanted to be able to hear it when you were outside? I was watching, at the time I was actually watching a movie, but it came in really handy with sports. Sports is a big deal. Mm -hmm. There's a big yep. football game coming up. There is. And maybe you want to have people over. And maybe those people might want to hang out on the back porch for a minute, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the TV's on in the room, in the living room. You can have the Sonos playing through your Sonos Beam or your Sonos Arc. And the game audio is still happening outside. So people outside catching fresh air, stuff like that, <laughs> can come back in when they hear a big play happening. They don't have to miss anything yeah. important. Or as I do, as soon as the game plays takes a, a break and the commercials come on, you rush back in to see to the, the commercials. Yeah. That's what I do. Me. I mean, my Washington football team hasn't been in a, super, uh, a big football game in a long time, so <laughs> so uh, it'll They'll be a while. There. Yeah, right? They'll get there. So yeah, sports is yeah. a perfect example, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can sort of keep the party going outside on the back porch, front porch, bathrooms, upstairs, downstairs, anywhere in the house, you have yet to put a Sonos speaker. Right. And the Move is the first one to do that, and, uh, and then they made the Roam. Yes, which is awesome. Yeah. Because it's small, compact, you can just throw it in your bag and go. You can get up and go. Uh, that's what I liked about just the ease of use. I mean, it was kind of, it stayed in my backpack. Yeah, so that one's really, really portable. Yeah. Like, the move is nice. And I think the main thing I would want to do with the move is take it around the house, right? Yeah. Great sound, big battery, use it anywhere at the house. But if I actually do want to go to the beach or go camping, that roam... Yeah. A lot lighter, not going to add a ton of weight to my bag. and exactly. But it does the same thing as the move, where you could use it in any room of the house, throw it out on the back porch for the people getting fresh air. Yep, and group it together. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you're, uh, oh, we're showing some app footage here. This is uh, Sonos. In case you didn't already know, Sonos is, like, really powerful. Uh, and it basically allows you to do 
streaming of just about any music source you can think of that's available on the internet. So Spotify, Pandora, what music service are you like partial to? What do you, how do you get music? Definitely Spotify. But tune in radio too if I'm somewhere and can't get my local radio station. Okay, tune in radio tune in for radio. local radio, mm -hmm. Spotify. Spotify. Definitely my number one. Yep. Yeah. So whatever music service you're into, you can load it up in the Sonos app on your phone and make it play in like any room of your house where you have a Sonos speaker. Uh, total control from the app, you can like group zones together and stuff like that. Did you get a chance to really fiddle around with the app? I did, um, but not as much as I wanted to. Um, but I did, I, mean, I definitely did grouping, which was, it was really neat so, to be able to do that. And so that's how you might say, get the audio from the TV yep. to play on other speakers. You just group them together. Mm -hmm. And it's like super easy to do it's that. It's really just literally pressing a button on your phone. Yeah. Uh, Sonos, one of the things they really specialize in, in addition to making great sounding speakers, is that app, that software that it controls everything. That thing just gets better every year, and it, it was it's already the best controlling sort of uh, app for this type of a uh, multi-room wireless music system. Yeah, and with Spotify, they have the grouping system with Sonos too. Yeah, so it works with Spotify, Spotify Connect. Connect. So yeah, yeah. that's uh, and uh, so you can use the just Spotify app or the Sonos, the Sonos app. app. You kind of have your choice mm -hmm. there which is one of the only systems that gives you that choice. Yes. When you were talking to customers, would you really get a chance to sort of dig in and like talk about how many rooms they wanted this in and like build big systems like that? For sure. Um, how many rooms, really a big thing too, when you're going to Sonos Whole Home is your internet too. Uh, especially not only with the move in the room because these have a little bit more flexibility, but with the TV mm -hmm. aspect of it. Uh, Cause you, it is a Wi-Fi based network and you want to be able to make use of that. So I feel like that was important too. With building up with the customer, it was rooms, internet capability, and all those to go into it. So would you find yourself talking about how much download speed do you have? Are you gonna yeah. be able to stream music in multiple rooms at the same time? Yeah. The, so you're talking about bandwidth, bandwidth and stuff like yep. that. Awesome. And yeah, I mean, we sell better router systems. You can of course mm -hmm. get better internet download speeds from your internet service provider. Put that with a really good router system with Sonos. Uh, yeah, that's the recipe for success. Yes. Sweet. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So um, let's take a look at my computer real quick. I'll just show off where the Sonos stuff is. Uh, what I like to do uh, on crutchfield.com is search just the word Sonos uh, and it will take you to this page. It's kind of like, here's everything you need to know about Sonos, Sonos. on our website. Uh, so it's got, of course, beauty shots of their products. There are videos sort of showing you uh, how Sonos works. Uh, you can hit click here to just see everything, or you can go down here to sort of find the speakers that you want. The Move and the Roam are right here on this page. And uh, there's two magical words on this Move page right now, uh, which is in stock with supply chain issues. In stock is sometimes hard to come by. We've got the move in stock at the moment, so can't promise how long it'll be in stock or how many more we'll get or when we'll get them. But at the moment, the move is in stock. And uh, let's go see, is the Rome in stock right now as well? I think so. Look at that. The Rome is in stock as well. These are available in black. They're available in white. Yeah. Uh, the Rome has a uh, separate wireless charger that you just sit the Rome on. Uh, the Move has a wireless charger, right? You just sit it down. So there's no plugging and unplugging wires once it's all hooked up. Yeah. Cool. cool. So I've been calling you River this like whole time. Yeah. But I, I can't really call you River anymore. I mean, you could. I could. But, you River know. is what we would call at Crutchfield a phone name. And a lot of us at Crutchfield that have been on the phones talking to customers have phone names. Mm -hmm. Why are you called River? Why have we been calling you River? It was my alter ego. <laughs> yeah, it is, right? It's like a separate personality. It's your work yeah. person. Yep. Uh, but uh, your real name is Jess or Jesse? Yep. Sure not is. Jessica. Don't call right. her Jessica. Yeah. She does Cats not like out that. That's the bag. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, but Jess or Jesse, and uh, there was already probably a Jess or a Jesse when you started. Yeah, I think right? so. There are Jesse? Yeah, there was. So we can't have two Jesses no. on the phone. Who would, so, who would, you, who would you transfer no. the call to when right. somebody calls asking for Jess? Yep. So you came up with River. Yep. Uh, and then you moved to accounting. Yeah. And then we just hired a whole new class of trainees. Yep. I, that is my day job. When I'm not talking to you about this stuff, I'm talking to a totally different group of people about this stuff all day. I mean, that's my favorite part of my job is just go on long monologues about car stereos and Sonos and TVs and stuff. 
And uh, so I am in the middle of training uh, 12 new sales yeah. advisors. They'll be ready to be on the phones in a couple months. We are in like week two, and one of them has chosen their phone name. And they didn't know you're, you, there was a river. Now they I've have heard. chosen river. And so there's a new river <laughs> at Crutchfield. Uh, so if you call looking for river right now, there is no river no at Crutchfield. River. Old river's in accounting, yep. new river's still in training. <laughs> Uh, and uh, pretty soon there'll be a new river available on the phone. She'll have a sure. bio. You'll be able to see her uh, on the website and, and stuff like that. So, uh, so we're sort of retiring the, the uh, you're like River One. The OG. OG River. OG river. And uh, New G River yeah. is coming soon. So yes. Jess, thank you so much thank for you. joining me here on Crutchfield Live. Uh, I don't see any additional questions, so I think uh, cool. I think we're gonna call it on the Sonos stuff. Was there? Did I miss anything? Is there anything you wanted to say about Sonos that I didn't? I didn't. We didn't get to. No, I mean, really, we just said it all. Just that it's awesome. I mean, I know what we haven't talked about yet. What? What music do you like to listen to? Like, what did you play when you got your Sonos hooked up and your Spotify app going? What's your go-to first song to play? I'm sure you did this on headphones and home theaters and car speakers and all that stuff we sell that you would get to demo sometimes. What's your go-to song that you want to test and see how good something sounds? What do you use? <laughs> You're totally gonna laugh. Um, it's I, probably not the best testing song, but it's one of my favorites. It's uh, Katie May from with Pigpen with the Grateful Dead. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so it's just, it's really bluesy and sultry and just, Good with the vocals and the treble and just, I don't know, it's really... You seem embarrassed that this is your song. Yeah. Why? I don't know, because it's not your typical song testing song. So, I mean, it sounds like female vocals, acoustic instruments, I mean, no, that's... No, Pigpen Man. Oh, see, the I don't song know. is about Katie Mae, but yeah. Oh. It's a man. Yeah. God, it's about that. Yeah. I'm not a... That's okay, I know. Is this a Grateful Dead song or is it about yeah, Grateful Dead? Yeah, no, it's a, so a Grateful Dead song. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I, I'm not personally uh, a, a deadhead. I mean, I can appreciate the stuff that's been on the radio, but it's, it's generally not my thing. Yeah. I know it's big time your thing. It is. You go to live shows and stuff? All the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, awesome. Well, thank you once thank again you. for talking Sonos with me, <laughs> Jess. Uh, and, uh, cool. Uh, Thanks get for having me. Now. All go. right, I'm getting it. Get out of here. <laughs> Uh, thank you for a couple questions that came in. Sonos is indeed great. Uh, we are going to move into our next segment of the show. We're going to talk about this guy right here with that guy right there. He's actually been on Crutchfield Live before. His name is Eric Angevin. Third time. Your third time. <laughs> and every time, do we do we mention every time that you wrote a book? No. Yeah, you're, he's an author. Yeah, you can go once. find his buy his book on uh, other websites. Yeah, it is college basketball season right now, so that's not <coughs> a bad time because it's about Hinkle Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, uh, which I always mention for those who don't love basketball. That's at the end of the movie Hoosiers. That's where they play the final game. And uh, in the in movie Hoosiers, movie. are they at the actual place? Yes. Nice. Yes. So we get to see there. the Hinkle Fieldhouse, which is what you your book is about. about. Yep. The history of the building. It's on the. <clears throat> National Register of Historic Places, so it's a, you know it has a long history. So yeah, not just a sports thing. A not as thing. long of a history as this turntable. Yeah, brand, this however. is why you're yeah. here today. Yeah. Uh, we got the book plug out of the way. I'm, <laughs> I'm a big fan of a shameless plug. I yeah. would feel I'd offer that up. Uh, but your main job at Crutchfield is to use your writing skills to write mm -hmm. about our products. Correct. And so when we knew that we were getting our new dual turntables in, mm -hmm. uh, we put them in your hands. You got to take yeah. them home. Is that right? Yes. Yes. I actually, and uh, I also, uh, we recently did renovations to the creative space and we got bigger desks. And I thought, you know, I have enough space now. I even told Bill Crutchfield, I was like, I'm going to put a turntable on this desk. And a turntable yeah. <laughs> work audio system? Yes. yes. That's fantastic. Yep, yep. I picked a, uh, a phono preamp that has a headphone amp built into it. So okay. I don't have to blast it out into the room for everybody else to listen to, but I can just put on my headphones yeah, and listen the, to records. Yeah, because the creative department up on the third floor here mm -hmm. at Crutchfield headquarters is kind of known as the library. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because it, you don't hear music going on, but everybody's jamming. Uh, yeah. Headphones all yeah. over the place, so there's a lot of creative stuff happening. But you can't have 12 different speaker systems in a in a room with that size. No, it's, so it's madness if you do that. Yeah. So you have uh, a turntable, a uh, headphone amp, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, a nice set of headphones. Right. And is that where you tested the new dual turntables? Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. The one we have here is the CS418, which mm -hmm. is kind of where the line begins. Uh, the one I have at my desk is the 518, so that's like the step up from okay. this one. Um, so, 
I mean, turntables have become have been coming back for years now, mm -hmm. right? This is no longer news yeah. that turntables are a, a right. and vinyl is coming back. Uh, but dual turntables, uh, that's a brand I'm very familiar with mm -hmm. in the car audio world, right? We've, we sell right. like four different mm -hmm. dual branded car stereos. Uh, and though yeah, they're they're known as sort of uh, you know not all that expensive, but mm -hmm. really have a lot of cool features type yeah. of radio. Uh, and then I hear dual turntables, and I'm thinking, okay, is this a really inexpensive mm -hmm. feature laden turntable, or is there more to it than that? Is yeah. there some history here? You know the story. Uh, yeah. I'm setting you up. I do yeah. not know the answer. What is the connection between dual car stereos <laughs> and turntables? I know the chicken and the egg answer for this particular one. First, I want to talk about the history of the company that makes the turntables because that is okay. the first thing that came along. So dual turntables mm -hmm. comes before dual car stereos. Yes. Got it. Yes. Um, so, so this company was started by a couple of brothers in Germany in 1907. Uh, at the time, they were making like clockwork gears. Okay. You know, doing some, some good machining, you know, they knew how to make uh, some delicate parts. And then in 1927, when the gramophone was a big deal, then they invented something they called the dual motor. And they called it that because there were two ways. I'm going to guess there's two? No. No? There's <laughs> no. not two motors? No, there's two ways that, that the gramophone could work. One, you crank. Okay. The handle, or then they started having enough electricity in homes that they could like, well, you could also plug this thing in. So they invented a motor that would work both ways. Oh. So it was called the dual motor. So whether you, if you didn't have enough electricity to take advantage of the electric, yeah. of, of that you to power still, your motor, yeah. you could just crank it and yeah, play music. It would still be using the, that same part either way. So, so yeah. that became such a ubiquitous thing for them. They just changed the name of the company. Okay, we're dual now. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. So that they became dual mm -hmm. named dual in 1927. Mm -hmm. Gramophone dual dual yeah. a, dual powered motor. Yeah. And uh, is this a gramophone or is this a <laughs> is this a turntable? Is this a this phonograph? Is a what is table. this? Yeah. This here's a turntable. Because if it was a gramophone, it would have that big ah trumpet that's, on top. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Got yeah. it. Yeah. So uh, so these these turntables this turntable company uh, i we i saw we got a comment a little while ago that somebody was excited they're back is what he said because oh, yeah. because uh, this like i reacted to this emotionally when i first saw it because this is the kind of turntable my dad had like this is what i remember seeing in my home when we when i was a kid yeah you know and so like i was like that's cool i could own one that kind of looks like the one my dad had um, so you know there was a period of time where being a turntable manufacturer was uh, not a great business plan. Mm. Um, kind of like in the 80s, right. around that time where, where digital you know, CDs and such started coming in. When I started at right. Crutchfield in 1996, we mm -hmm. sold two different models of turntables, a mm -hmm. Sony and a Denon. And we were told at that time, yeah, don't expect us to even still be carrying those in a year from right. now. But vinyl's going. Right. It's, it's almost dead. completely gone. It's dead. Yeah. And <laughs> the, quite the opposite has happened. Right. Right. And so that's actually where the other duel comes into play is like this company went bankrupt for a while. Oh. Yeah. And that's why people are saying uh, they thought they were gone for good. Yeah. Um, but during kind of that period where they were in limbo, they sold the North American name rights to another company. And that's oh. the company that makes the car stereos. So really, it's kind of a whole separate thing. It has yeah, nothing to do with company the brothers, the German engineering. No. None of that stuff is really no. a part of but the dual car name. stereo. Yeah. But it yeah. is the same logo and everything, I think. Right? <laughs> it's pretty, it's like, pretty similar, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, not really related in, mm -hmm. uh, in, you know, in fundamental, in DNA, but more of no. a marketing but thing. But interesting, yeah. The, I mean, I guess the other company knew, like, well, you know, these guys have a good reputation in the audio world. So, so that would be a good thing for us to invest in, use that name. But, yeah. But, you know, fortunately, we get to have both. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I see I have a comment that has nothing to do with dual turntables, uh, but David on Facebook, I see your comment. I am going to come back to it because we're going to bring in Buddy to talk about his car stereo, and your comment will fit right in with that. So hang tight with us. We're going to finish up talking dual turntables here uh, with Eric. So you got to use one. You've used a bunch of turntables. How'd you find right. it? Like, does it, does it hold up? Is it uh, exceeding your expectations? What's going on? Uh, well, yeah, there's there's a couple things I like about this. They give you, uh, first of all, it's, it's good solid build quality. Like it's, they're not s super expensive. They're not super cheap. They fall kind of in that mid range, but it's a German company. And we know that like German engineering is considered to be really solid, 
rugged, long lasting, and that is the reputation of dual turntables. Like a lot of people still have the one that they had in the 70s. Right, right. Like they don't die. <laughs> They're that kind of a thing. Um, so, so I get the impression from having used these for the past couple of days that, that they're still building them to those same standards that they had back in the 70s. It's not like they decided to come back in 2022 with some cheap turntables. No, no. They decided to come back with what made them special to begin with. Yeah, like I keep knocking on this because this is solid, <laughs> solid plinth here. <laughs> yeah, it's like solid MDF yeah. plinth. Uh, I've got some of the specs here. I will say one thing that I think okay. sets it above other turntables kind of in this price range is they have, have sent this sent these out all of the entire lineup has Ortofon 2M uh, either red or blue yeah that's I, yeah. I took note of that mm -hmm. uh, and that that's not a uh, inexpensive no. you know entry level f uh, cartridge no yeah they're they're, they're uh, appreciated by audiophiles yeah <laughs> so there's like four different models right and yeah. three of them have the Ortofon 2m red yeah the top of the line one has the 2m blue yes and that's the one I personally covet I want that ah, one yes. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so uh, whenever I get a chance to as you say use my employee discount and, and take something home with me that's, right I got my eye on it <laughs> smart uh, so this is the 418 which is mm -hmm. uh, Manual belt drive. Uh, it has a built-in phono preamp. You can turn it on or off. Right. So if you want to use this with your existing stereo gear, mm -hmm. you can pretty much use it with any existing stereo gear. Right. Uh, you can use a separate phono preamp. You can use the one built in. You can use one in your stereo. Right. Uh, and uh, let's see what what's up next. The 429 yeah. is the 429. I set up at home. Okay. That one is fully automatic. Fully automatic. Yeah, that's so, the main thing, that, which is comes in handy like when I'm working from home or cooking doing anything like that I used to have to kind of stop what I was doing when it hit the end and went into that final groove yeah I'd hear and I'd ah, I gotta go turn that thing off like dry my hands off I'm doing sure. all this stuff now this one will just pick up the tone arm return it to rest and shut itself off you yep. know that's that's handy not all audiophiles love that they right think it might compromise the sound quality some of them don't like it that's fine it's got a button on the back you just turn it off if you don't want to use and it. it doesn't control the tone arm at all so you yeah. become in total control yeah. you have of a choice where you put that mm -hmm. and then it it's just going to stay in that final groove yeah of your making record that noise making that noise yeah. which uh, i could tell you like a week ago mm -hmm. uh, we were playing music while eating dinner we ate dinner mm -hmm. we started watching tv we never even once considered the fact that the needle was <laughs> still in the groove and the record was still yeah. spinning mm -hmm. uh and uh turned out turned the system off and went to bed and realizing, hold on, what is that clicking sound? Uh, and the fully automatic turntable will keep that from being a problem for right, you. Right. Uh, yeah, and I like the fact that I can choose, like, if, you know, if I am just sitting and I know I'm going to be paying attention, I can do it manually right. if I want. But if I, if I want that convenience of having it shut itself off so I don't have to stop what I'm doing, I got it. All right, so the 418 is manual, mm -hmm. 429 is fully automatic, 518 uh, is uh, also a manual yeah. turntable. It goes back to being fully manual, uh, but what's different about it is the, the tone arm assembly has a, a dual gimbal thing. It's, it's a lot more sturdy, responsive, you know, it, it's just an upgrade to this part. Got it. Yeah. And so that should help with frequency response, with mm -hmm. accuracy. Uh, will it help the wow and flutter maybe a little bit? It should. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, so just a, an upgrade in just the componentry, uh, yeah. the, the precision. As we go up from the, uh, let's see, the 518, then we get to the, uh, the one you are coveting. Yeah, the 618Q. 618Q. Big difference there is like all of the previous ones are belt drive. Mm -hmm. um, and this one is direct drive where, okay, you, like, you know, it's directly turning this, there's no belt between, you know, the motor's yeah. not here, it's here, you know? I've had, I've had yeah. a direct drive motorcycle. I mm -hmm. think it's similar in that, right? Like, uh, m m most motorcycles have a chain or a belt. When you, when your crank shaft spins on the engine, it spins a belt, which spins a crank on your wheel right. and makes your wheel turn. Or you could have a direct drive, which is like a crank shaft coming directly out of the engine into the right. wheel, making the wheel turn without a belt. And that's similar to what's going on in a direct drive turntable. Right. Uh, and, and that typically gives you more accuracy. What's the benefit of direct drive? Well, like, for instance, it's almost always in DJ turntables because they want that thing to get up to speed fast. Mm. And then they want it to maintain that rotational speed uh, you know, with extreme accuracy. Yep. And that's the sort of thing you can get. Like, I've, I've heard people say people with perf perfect pitch love a direct drive turntable because they'll hear that any little amount of wow and flutter stuff will make it sound out of pitch to them. Yeah. Something like this, it, that shouldn't happen. 
And uh, the wow and flutter is at 0.07 on yeah. the 618. This is not the 618, but on yeah. the 618. <laughs> yeah. uh, so very precise. Uh, and that one is also uh, semi-automatic. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about fully automatic, manual, and semi-automatic. What's the difference there? Yeah, semi-automatic, uh, there are different ways it can work, but uh, sometimes it'll just stop and lift it won't go all the way back to rest. That just takes a little bit of the uh, extra machinery out okay. that the audio files don't love. Right. <laughs> like they don't love all that noise mm -hmm. that gets generated by that kind of equipment being in there. So yeah, it's just, it, it'll still keep it from just hitting that last groove and just bumping around. So fully automatic is like you can hit a button and the to tone arm comes in and yeah. lays itself down it does at the beginning of your you. record. Yeah. <laughs> at the end, it lifts up and goes back home. Right. Semi-automatic is it just d stops you from leaving your needle in the groove yeah. at the end of the record. Yeah, just a little protective, a little helpful. <laughs> and again, defeatable. If you don't like it, turn it off. Right. Yeah. Uh, also, the 618Q is available in like three different colors from what it looks like. We've got the uh, gloss black finish a uh, walnut veneer, and then the uh, the black vinyl finish. Yeah, and that one will look like this. That's, That's what, what this, this is here. Is. Yeah. So uh, kind of like a wood grain sort of a thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Uh, I don't see any quest. Oh wait, hold on. I'm one of these questions. Looks like it's about the dual turntable, but it's being blocked by my survey. The poll. <laughs> How do I make that go away? Uh, I'm going to close pull. There we go. Sorry, if I screwed anything up, you're going to tell me. Uh, but there's some questions that were being blocked by this. Uh, all right. Production value on this live stream is fantastic. Kudos to your production team. I'm glad I came back to the comments. Fantastic. Uh, Jerry Georgopoulos says, purchase the original Dual 1019 in Germany. 1968 Dual had a very good reputation. Uh, that's Pretty cool. Uh, Jason said, uh, what's a good five channel amp? Uh, 45 watts by four or four ohms. That's a car stereo question. We'll come back to that here very soon, Jason. Thank you. Uh, automatic is super convenient, says Ab Show. Oh, that's a former guest on the show. Uh, that's Dylan. You can talk to her uh, as a Crutchfield advisor. Thank you for your shout out, Dylan. Uh, Jerry says, what is Dual using for a direct drive motor? So he wants to get really nitty gritty uh, down. Do you happen to know? Did you go that deep? I, I don't recall them telling me that information. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of these are very yeah. new to Crutcher. Like they've just come into yeah. our uh, inventory. Some of them are still getting researched. Uh, so, but like that's why I don't have the 618 in my hands right now. Yeah, we don't have any yet. Yeah, exactly. Think. So yeah. <laughs> the uh, actually the that's a good point. The 418, the 429, the 518. All three of those are in mm -hmm. stock right now. 618. We're still waiting, supply chain issues, things like that. So we are we are eagerly awaiting their arrival uh, and our product research team will get their hands on them and we should be able to tell you something like that. So yeah. uh, hit us up, call an advisor, uh, keep looking at the website and watch for that 618 to uh, no longer say pre-order. Yeah. You can, again, yeah, you, you can put it in your car, like I've got it in my wish list right now. Yeah, the, <laughs> so that pre-order button, ready, uh, yeah. hit that and uh, you can place your order, we'll ship you one. As soon as we get enough in stock to fill all the orders, we'll get mm -hmm. one on there way to you so uh, if it's got a pre-order button that means we're we're kind of sure the mm -hmm. dual is actually shipping them we might not have a, an exact date when they'll be here yet uh, but a pre-order is possible mm -hmm. uh, so yeah uh, we want to and we will fulfill those orders in the order they are placed so uh, thank you everybody oh uh, George uh, Jerry Georgeopolis says belt drive or direct drive motor what is your thinking do you have a preference Eric uh, no, because I have only ever owned belt drive. That's why I'm kind of interested in getting my hands on on this on the 618Q because I want to have that comparison. I haven't made a comparison yet myself, but we've also got some some techniques ones that are that are direct drive yep. that are very popular. So I I will do a comparison and perhaps I will write an article. That'd be a great it. article. Yeah. <laughs> uh, certainly that can inform your writing when you're writing up yeah. the, the, you know, the, the pages for these products as they come in. So mm -hmm. yeah, awesome. Uh, I think we've gotten to all the questions I've been able to see here uh, about dual turntables, making sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, do we do we skip anything? Do we cover everything? I think all? we all? covered it pretty well, yeah. Eric, thank you so mm -hmm. much for yeah. coming in and talking Thanks. dual turntables, man. This is exciting. Thank you Anytime. so much. Killer. We got another special guest and he is eager. He is late, everybody. Totally late. He's lucky we're letting him on the show at all. 
Buddy, come on in, buddy. Take a seat. Thank you, sir. How you been? Good, good. And yourself? I've been fantastic. I've been filling time, waiting for you. <laughs> uh, I kid. No, you were, you are indeed late, but that's because uh, I didn't happen to know what you were doing, which was helping customers. That's right. Are, are we busy in the contact center today? A little bit, yeah. So our, uh, our scheduling team is now wishing they hadn't agreed to let you take time off uh, the phones and come over here and go on our Crutchfield Live? Possibly, possibly, but um, helping helping people find the products that they need for their uh, Absolutely. Situation. This is another way we're helping customers. Uh, it's another way we can communicate with you. Uh, you are in our Spanish International Department. That's correct. And uh, you just went through training like, it hasn't even been a year yet, has it? Uh, it'll be a year in March, so shy of a couple months. Just al almost a year. And so not only were you fully trained on like everything we sell uh, but and, and how to talk to people about it, but you do that in multiple languages. Yes. How, <laughs> I'm always curious, yeah, just two. Uh, I'm always curious, how is it, uh, do you think in English and then have to convert it all to Spanish in your brain? Like, how does that work for you? It, it really depends. Uh, sometimes that's how it goes on words that I don't use every day. Yeah. Um, but strangely enough, there are some words uh, that I only learned in Spanish, so I have to think of the English word, and it kind of goes backwards. It's so weird that way. Depends on the conversation yes. which way it's going to go. Yep. <laughs> and uh, and you could be speaking to a Spanish speaker or an English speaker at any given day, right? And and one from one call to the next. Yep. Uh, cool. Uh, you are here mainly to talk about your car stereo. Before we get to your car stereo, I've promised a couple people we would answer their questions. And you're, the, uh, you're where we're talking car stereo, so you and me are going to figure out what's going on here. Uh, the first one that came in was from David on Facebook. David said, uh, I just ordered a set of kicker replacement speakers for my 2003 Ram 1500. Been a customer since 2003, y'all rock. So that's not much of a question. I just saw it was car. I figured we wait till you're here. So what do you got? What do you got to say? Kicker speakers, Great. Ram trucks. Awesome, good man. Excellent. <laughs> uh, there was a question on YouTube from Jason Logan. Uh, what's a good five-channel amp that's somewhere around forty-five by four at four ohms and five hundred watts by one at two ohms? You got any amps just like off the top of your head when they, when you hear that? Uh, not right. Um, I'm used to having my my tools, which is my, my computer. Which I happen to have one right here. So you just <laughs> fill some time. I'm going to go find him an amp. Um, no, I kid. Uh, so five channel amps. Why would you even use a five channel amp? What's the benefit of a five channel as opposed to like saying having a, a four channel amp and then a separate sub amp? Why would you want a five channel? Uh, ease of install and just having less devices, less real estate taken up in your vehicle. Uh, so if you go with the five channel amp, then you've got your, you know, amp driving, so let's say your front and back speakers and your subwoofer all in one device. So that's one set of wires that you have to run for power um, that you, you and ground and turn on, and then you wouldn't have to run a whole nother separate set for your sub. Yeah, so fewer power wires, uh, easier installation, uh, less room under your seat, things like that. Uh, I have found one that I think is pretty great, especially knowing what I know we're about to talk about. Uh, this amp might make a lot of sense. Uh, the Infinity Reference 7005A. Uh, it's very close to what the power specs you requested are, Jason. It's at 50 watts by four at four ohms. So the speakers you put in your front doors, your back dash, wherever your factory speakers go, they'll all get about 50 watts. Uh, at four ohm, assuming you're using four ohm speakers, and this puts out 500 watts at two ohms uh, for your sub channel, which sounds about like what you're looking for. Uh, and it leads us directly into what you've done in your car. Uh, and if uh, I totally butchered the name of your car earlier, I think I called it a uh, Honda Velociraptor, <laughs> uh, which is totally not what it is. What car do you drive there, buddy? It's a 2020 Hyundai Veloster N uh, with the performance package. It's a cool looking car. It's a lot of fun. It's neat. <laughs> I love the red lines on it. I mean, it is stylish. It is cool looking. I had no idea what it was. When I saw it, I had to go back around to the back and see it's a Velociraptor. <laughs> I'm not going to stop. It's, that's what I'm going to call it. Uh, but yeah, it's a sweet looking car. It, it looks fast. It looks sporty. It looks fun to drive. It's quick. I wouldn't say it's fast necessarily, but it's quick. Okay. From, from, from a stop, it gets you going uh, quickly. 
If we're trying to set records on a straight line, that's probably not the vehicle for that. Got it. Uh, it's some some sensibility about it as well. Yes. Yep. Uh, and uh, it came with the stock Infinity sound system and the stock stereo, right? Is that like the upgraded package? That's the only package that's that it. comes with that that car. That yes. trim level, all of that stuff, that's what you're getting. Yeah. And you bought this before you started working at Crutchfield, the that's car. That's correct. If you had started working at Crutchfield first and known everything there is to know about car stereo, would you have bought the same car with the same system? Probably not. Ah. Probably not. Uh, because there's so many cool things that we sell here that I can't do to that car yet. Right. Um, so speaking of things you can't do, the radio in the dash, is it replaceable on this car? Not right now. Not right now. That's happening a lot. We're having that conversation with a lot of people. The radio is integrated, right? A lot of stool, a lot of neat stuff happening. Is there like a touch screen in there? It's got some neat stuff. Touch screen. It's got telematics for the vehicle, yeah. logs of performance. Uh, you can shift the drive mode right from the, the head unit uh, for sport or normal person driving. Um, <laughs> but uh, you can guess what mode I'm usually in. Right. Um, but yeah, it's it's got a lot of vehicle information put into the head unit. So, so replacing that would take a very fancy adapter, uh, a crazy, probably very expensive installation kit to make the physical, make the new radio work and the dash still look okay. Uh, some computer programmers are going to have to make m your vehicle's computers talk to the new radio's computers with another computer, right? Yeah. All of that would have to happen uh, just to make it do what it does now, in addition to the additional functionality you might get from a new stereo. Exactly. Does it have like a CarPlay and Android Auto and stuff like that? It does, yes. Okay, so that's a lot of what you want in a new stereo right now. Yeah. Yeah. But there's still more. <laughs> You're going to replace it. As soon as you can, yeah. that radio's coming out. There's always more, yes. So yeah. until then, you were not okay with the level of sound that the factory Infinity system gave you. I mean, it, uh, don't get me wrong. It uh, For my experience, and I have a lot of experience with, with vehicles and different vehicles, um, it had the best OEM sound system I've ever heard. Oh. Um, but it's still an OEM sound system. Right. Uh, so, so, was, so what does that mean? What does that lack, right? It's a great sounding, as far as OEM sound systems go, OEM meaning original equipment manufacturer, factory radios, it's a good one. It's yeah. above average. Best one you've ever heard. What is it still not doing for you? Uh, it's uh, the granularity over the control of the sound uh, was missing. Uh, it does actually have time alignment, which is kind of unique for an OEM system, mm -hmm. but uh, being able to shape the highs, lows, and middles was lacking significantly. You know, Chris, our other trainer, the other guy that does what I do, he's going to be so excited if he's at home watching now because <laughs> granularity is his favorite word. Uh, and granularity, that ability to really go in and tweak minute details of how it sounds, right? What exact frequencies are coming out of what speakers, at what times, and all of that. I like to call that tweakability. I know that the people, if, if any of my training class currently is watching, we've been talking about tweakability. And so you didn't get a lot of tweakability in your factory radio. Correct. And you wanted that. Yeah. And I wanted more. Uh, I like bass, uh, much to my wife's dismay, uh, <laughs> but I like bass in my vehicle. I like to have, uh, especially if the wife and kids are not in the car, I like the windows down. I like the music all the way up, as loud as it can go, you know, as long as I'm not at a stoplight. And I want my hair moving to the bass. So, and so I've got a picture on the screen. You can see what we've got there, uh, which shows is a picture from your actual install. There's an infinity amp. Mm -hmm. Is that, that's not the 7005 that I just recommended to uh, our... No. To G, uh, who that was, Jason. No, a different Infinity Amp. That's correct. Uh, but next to that is, uh, you could almost call it Mr. Granularity right there. That's the audio control. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that thing? I see in this picture there's a ton of little knobs on it. Uh, it does some stuff digitally, right? That allows you to really get in there and fine tune everything? Yeah, that's a digital signal processor. Um, and for right now, all that it's really doing is shaping my bass signal. 
it has inputs to do all of my speakers, but I haven't, I'm not that far in my build yet. Uh, for right now, I'm just concentrating on adding more bass and the, the DQ DX uh, by audio control was able to give that to me and give it a lot more bass on the low end that you could really feel. Um, that's the other thing. The bass that came with the factory was decent, but it, it wasn't something you could really feel. Uh, and now by uh, tweaking um, the DQ DX, I was able to kind of bring up the really low ends below where your ear can even hear so that you can actually feel it. And the, it, it sounds really nice now. This is like some next level car stuff, yeah. right? Do most people need this level of granularity? No. No, right? I mean, most, <laughs> most of us, and I would put myself in this category, I don't need all of those knobs and, and bells and whistles and uh, all that stuff. I mean, I want it to sound good. I've got amplifiers in my car, uh, better speakers. I've got a subwoofer. I can crank it. It does sound good, but I don't have this level of granular control that you have. And that's what this thing does. Now, is it all controls like in the knobs on the, on the unit itself, or can you hook up a computer to this and take it even further? Um, for this one, I believe it's all just knobs. Um, it does have time, time alignment that you can kind of put it in a mode to program it and account for that. Um, but again, since I'm just using the base channel and haven't integrated all of the other speakers, uh, be five more channels that I have to add into that. Yeah. Uh, since I'm just doing the bass, I haven't gotten all that set up yet. So that's a big part of it. Uh, you've given yourself the ability to add more amplifiers, add more speakers, add subwoofers, things. You've already done some of that, but you're not done. Here. Correct. Uh, and so what amplifier did you put in here? That's an amplifier right next to that DQDX. That is, and uh, I believe that's the Infinity Kappa 5. Let's see if it says here in your article. Yep, sure enough, Infinity Kappa 5 channel amplifier. So this is a little bit more powerful than the one we were talking about for Jason earlier. This is at 75 watts per four speakers. Uh, maybe not quite as much power on the sub channel. Uh, so why did you choose this amp? Well, I wanted to keep everything, uh, since the car came with the Infinity sound system, I. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm silly that way. I wanted to pay homage to that um, and thought that Hyundai and uh, their partner Harman had a great idea. So I just kind of wanted to capitalize on that and keep that going forward. Um, and this was, this was the one, the amp that was going to kind of do that for me with the wattage uh, I wanted to have for basically all the speakers in my car. Yeah, so just because your car may have come with original Infinity speakers doesn't mean you have to do what Buddy has done, but you like the idea of keeping it Infinity. It says Infinity somewhere inside your car. You've got actual Infinity speakers. We'll talk about those in a second. And Infinity amp powering them, and you just liked the sort of uh, keeping it consistent. Yeah, the continuity, if you will. So this is the amp. You've got uh, four channels of this amp power your speakers. And which speakers did you go with? Uh, I see some tweeters here. So you've got some component systems happening. Uh, I see some Infinity speakers there. What, what do you like about these Infinity speakers? Um, the sound, the, the tone is a lot richer um, and I would say louder than the stock. Um, just by, they're just better speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it came with Infinities, um, but it, they were, I believe they were paper cone uh, Infinity speakers, and they just, again, they seem to be missing something. Sure. <laughs> not, not something that I can really pinpoint and say, it's missing this. And, and that's, not a, that's not new, right? I mean, even though they're Infinity, and they're, it's, a, it's the same company that makes the Infinity speakers and amps we're talking about here, they're not putting the same level of speaker in the factory Velociraptor, right? Uh, they're putting uh, cheaper materials, cheaper things, smaller magnets, things like that. Yeah. This is uh, a speaker you put in there on purpose with a lot of power to get that better sound, to get that speaker louder and better. Uh, it's not just as simple as taking the old speakers out and putting the new ones in. It takes more power. That's where that amplifier comes into play. Uh, how hard was it to put this tweeter in? 
Uh, actually, not that hard, uh, to be honest with you. Um, there are other ways of, you know, m more than one way to skin a cat, but um, for what we were doing there, we were able to use the factory uh, tweeters, since we knew those, those were coming out anyway, uh, and kind of remove them from the back and put the replacements in and glued them into the factory thing. So we already had a bracket made for it. Nice. It was, yeah, it made things much quicker. It, you know, in the years I've been doing this, uh, replacing or adding tweeters to cars has gotten easier. It's always and should still be thought of as like, it's a little bit more than just taking the six and a half out of the door and putting a new one in its place where everything is fairly standardized. Tweeters are less standardized, right? So each one's brackets and sizes are a little bit different and you're gonna have to do different things to put the new tweeters in place. But there's a lot more brackets. Those tweeters are getting closer to being all very similar. It's not that hard to take the factory tweeter out and put a new one in its place. It might involve things like Velcro or hot glue or brackets or something like that. And modifying the factory tweeter bracket replacing the tweeters has become a little easier. Yeah. Cool. So new tweeters, new six and a halfs in the front, uh, so new speakers in the back. What's next? Uh, well, next would be to rewire up all the speakers. Um, I do have a couple, uh, couple things to think about. Uh, I actually, that car has a center channel, channel oh, yeah. speaker. Um, with that, it with the upgraded Infinity center channel speaker for that speaker location, it was way too loud, just from the center of the dash. Okay. Um, it seems like the factory amp in the Veloster puts a lot of power to that center speaker location. Uh huh. Um, and with the upgraded speaker in there, it, you could tell <laughs> right away. Um, so that threw the sound staging off in the car. Yeah. Uh, it just didn't sound right. What do you, how are you going to solve that? Um, well, for right now, a real simple fix was just to unplug that speaker. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've been telling our advisors to tell our customers for years, right? These cars that come with center channel speakers, there's no simple, easy, re ready to go way of making that center channel work with your new stereo. It does not have a center channel connection on it. It doesn't have s processing for what sound should even be coming out of a center channel. How, how do you power a center channel speaker? How much is too much power? What size speaker is it? They're all different. There's, n I mean, it, the most, and usually the best way to deal with your factory center channel is to unplug it, make it stop making noise, and just you control the sound with every other speaker in the car. Are you gonna do more than that? It really depends. Yeah. <laughs> if I wanna get into that, uh, it almost seems like more trouble than it's worth. It is. It's, That's, yeah. It sounds really good right now, better than it ever has. With the center channel unplugged. Correct. Take it from, I mean, that is uh, perfect. <laughs> uh, you're underscoring what I've been telling people for years. Uh, you, you probably won't make it sound better by spending a lot of time and effort and money on improving your center channel in your car. Not right. that important. Um, I've got a couple questions coming here. One of them I see coming in on YouTube. Uh, LVO says, I'm having that issue with my truck. I upgraded the head unit to the 1007 XR, which I happen to know, but I've talked about this radio with my training class yesterday. It's the most expensive stereo we sell. Top of the line Kenwood 10.1 inch touchscreen, a mound of tweakability in the head unit. It does a ton of stuff. It's fantastic. But to upgrade, uh, the link on the Tundra is a nightmare and uh, instead of running new wires to the speakers. Um, so he's having trouble with the rest of it, like replacing tweeters and speaker wires and uh, running speaker wires maybe into the doors and replacing all of that. Did you do that or are you gonna, you're, you're gonna do that? We're running new wires all throughout the Velos Veloster? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the plan, um, but I, I don't have a real clear, easy way to how to do that yet. Yeah, um, running new speaker wire from an amp into a door in a car is one of the hardest physical jobs in car audio, other than like, you know, building a subwoofer box or doing something very custom. Just trying to replace that wire is uh, is a bear. Yeah. Uh, and you might find that it's uh, it might not make a huge difference, right? Like adding thicker wire, uh, your, your, your amp is at about 75 watts. 
really the official Crutchfield recommendation is when you get up to around 100 watts, you probably should upgrade that speaker wire. Up until then, the factory speaker wire is probably going to be good enough. So, yeah, that's not a decision to be taken lightly. I'm, I'll be interested in having you back once you've replaced all those wires and all of the cuts and bruises <laughs> on your hands have healed from running those wires through the doors. Cuts on hands means progress. So. Yeah, no pain, no gain. Uh, the other question, uh, I didn't tell anybody I was going to do this because I forgot that I was going to do this, and I'm opening ourselves up to some, uh, we're going to see what happens here. Uh -oh. Your article has a comment on it. Uh -oh. I looked at this yesterday. Guess what language this comment is in? Español. Uh, si, senor. Uh, so, read comments. Uh, can you read that from there? Saludos. Tengo un más de seis dos mil... Vente con sistema voz y fábrica como puedo instalar un amplificador para un bajo trasero. Si no existe un cablero para el radio de fábrica. Okay, so he's looking to put a boss uh, radio in there. In a, in a 2020 Mazda 6? I got yeah. that part. Um, and he's looking for, it looks like an amp installation, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if that's a bypass. Ah, so now that we know that, I'm going to pull this up on something I can't exactly show you at home here. This is our internal sort of, uh, database, uh, 2020 Mazda 6, and I'm just going to see, uh, with... With or without Bose, we don't have this person here to ask them. So if it's Boss or Bose. Yeah, it could be Bose. Let's go see. Uh, I'm going to assume they have the factory Bose system. And from this comment, can you tell me, do they want to replace the factory radio? It or looks like they want to add an amplifier. Add an amplifier. So at this time, there's no fancy interface to make adding an amplifier to that car easy. You're going to have to simply do it the old-fashioned way of cutting and splicing and in, in tapping into factory speaker wires. Uh, if you can replace the radio, which at this time you cannot, uh, then uh, yeah, call, call one of our advisors, uh, uh, Holando Suarez from Juana Diaz. Uh, you should call and talk to Buddy. Uh, his, his, his bio is on the website. Go find Buddy's page. He's got his direct number there, uh, and he can answer you directly. I don't even know if this person is listening. I just thought, how cool is this? The one comment we've received, we haven't actually answered it on the website yet. I thought we might want to take advantage of you being sure. here to do that. Llámame Jolando. Vamos a hablar. Sweet. Uh, is there anything we've forgotten that we, haven't, that we need to talk about uh, with the Veloster? Uh, not that I can think of other than... Uh, have you done this subwoofer? There's a subwoofer pictured in this uh, article. Have you actually put that in the oh, car? Yeah, yeah, that's in there. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. Uh, and now after tweaking the uh, sound processor uh, and again pulling up the low frequencies on the low uh, frequency band, uh, my hair moves. Yeah. And it, it disrupts brain thought. If, you can get, if, you can, <laughs> if it can make my hair move, we'll, 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 then we'll be good. So yeah, that looks like a pretty massive sub. You've got plenty of power to drive it. Uh, and uh, oh, are we getting a, are we getting a Scherzer cam going? <laughs> this is awesome. My dog is in the background every time we do one of these Crutchfield Live videos. He usually just sits there on the couch and doesn't say a word, but he just decided he wanted to get down on the floor. And so uh, Scherzer's hanging out. He's one of the most best behaved dogs at Crutchfield, unless you're another dog. Uh, and then he doesn't like you at all. <laughs> Uh, so uh, that's Scherzer, the training dog, is what I call him, uh, and he's done he's done a great job today of being in the background and not distracting us too much. Thanks for getting the Scherzer cam going. Uh, so this is another Crutchfield Live. I think, unless I've missed something, let me go back and make sure I haven't missed some comments here. I want to make sure everybody gets answered. Uh, oh, I do have some more comments. Nava Suthamavong. I don't know if I've butchered your name or said it beautifully. Could be either one. Uh, it says, Sonos Rome, best portable speaker? Question uh, mark. It depends on what your application is, right? Like if you want to listen to music at your home and then also be able to take that same speaker out with you and have it be very portable, the Rome is one of the best you can get. If all you ever need is to have music with you at the beach, you don't need the Rome. You can just get a Bluetooth speaker and it'll be fine. But if you also want to have cool music playing at the house, 
The Rome or the Move, pretty solid choice. The Rome is the more portable version. Elvio says, was looking at the Kenwood amp with DSP integrating the iDatalink AR, would, uh, would that help the sound using the stock OEM amp existing wiring? So Elvio is asking a fairly advanced question here. He's the one mentioning earlier that he's put in a Kenwood 1007 XR uh, in his uh, Tundra, I think. Yeah, in the Tundra. Uh, and if there is an OEM amp interface that makes that possible, that is the way to go uh, on those Tundras. I don't have the, all of the information I might need to give you a detailed answer on this, LVO. Uh, but uh, yeah, if a Maestro AR, an amp replacement module, is available for your car, use that to put a new amp in there. Uh, and uh, the best thing you can do right now, LVO, is call us. Uh, talk to one of our advisors live over the phone. They can help you. They will be able to talk with you live, ask you questions to figure out what is actually the best way to do that. Another question came in. Spencer OMG says, what is your expected life of a home theater surround sound by Sony? Mine's like 20 years almost, I think. I'm going to throw it to you, buddy. What's the uh, expected life of a uh, Sony home theater surround sound receiver? Um, I don't think it's limited to the, the quality of the product. It's limited to technology. Uh, so if a new technology comes out, it's anybody's game. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really sure. <laughs> a 20-year-old Sony receiver might still be making beautiful yeah. music, but it might not be able to deal with all of the more uh, up-to-date surround sound formats and things like that. Exactly. So if you want the best, like Dolby Atmos and all that kind of stuff, you might be able to kind of integrate this old Sony with some new gear. Better yet, all new gear will make that very possible, and hopefully 20 years from now, we're answering that same question for you again. Uh, he goes on to say, on the website, our O3 quad cab, it says that the Sony XAV 9500ES won't fit, but I don't see why. Are you familiar with that Sony uh, ES model, the XAV 9500ES? We've talked about it here on Crutchfield Live was before. That, oh, was that the big one? That's the big new yeah. mobile ES Sony. Uh, we've had it live. People are very excited about it. They're also mad it doesn't have a volume knob, but we'll get they'll get over that. Uh, and wants to know why our website says it does not fit his particular car. This is the radio Spencer OMG is asking about. Uh, and I think I know the answer to why, but I just want to, I don't want to give you false info here. So uh, it looks like you are having a 03 Ram quad cab. Uh, and I'm doing this on my computer. I know you can't see it at home. Sorry about that, but it'll allow me to do this a little faster. Uh, Dodge pickup, Ram quad cab. I'm gonna assume it's a 1500 quad cab. Maybe it came with four or seven speakers. Either way, the fit answer is gonna be the same. Uh, so this Sony radio is a, oh, is right here. We still have it in studio. Uh, this thing is gorgeous. Big, beautiful screen, wireless car play. It uses a single DIN head unit. Technically, you can put a single DIN head unit in the 03 Dodge Ram. The only problem with it is that it takes a kit that holds a single DIN head unit, and that kit is plastic, and most single DIN head units are not saddled with the weight of a huge floating screen on the front of it. This is heavy, and it puts a lot of weight on that kit. And our vehicle research team, our product research team, pays a lot of attention to those subtle details, and it's not a good idea to try to secure this in your dash just using that kit we've got available for your car. That doesn't mean there won't be a better kit available in the future, but for now, this is not the floating screen radio for you. There are plenty of other floating screen radios that have a double DIN chassis. This radio is four inches tall. It literally sits more securely in your dash and will be able to hold the weight of a nice, beautiful 10 inch uh, or whatever size floating touchscreen. So that's what I would recommend. Uh, I'm sorry, this one is not a, re a great option for you, uh, but there are some other fantastic radios uh, that, will, uh, that will fit the bill in many other ways. Uh, and so, yeah, that's, uh, that's what's going on there. I hope that answers your question, Spencer. 
We got more questions coming in. We're just gonna keep answering questions till people stop, right? Uh, <laughs> Swiper 1911, just installed the XAV9500 in my car. Love it, that's the radio I was just holding up. That's that Sony ES. Uh, people love that radio and can't get enough of it. I am eager to put one in my Subaru. It looks beautiful. That would look nice in the Velociraptor if you can ever replace that radio. Uh, cool, uh, let's see. Oh, oh, and thank you, LOL, big help from Spencer. So I guess we got his, an his question answered. Thank you so much for watching, Spencer. I think we're gonna wrap this thing up. I don't see any more questions coming in. Uh, just a reminder, uh, Crutchfield the Podcast, season three, we're working on it now. Go to crutchfield.com slash podcast to check it out. Past episodes, recent episodes of Crutchfield Live can be available there as the audio only version as well. Oh, poll results. We asked a question earlier, I've got the results. What topics would you like us to cover in upcoming Crutchfield Live? You haven't seen the answer yet, have you? No, I, nope. The answer's possibilities were car, home, car audio, home audio, TVs, or cameras. What do you think, what do you think wins? What do people want us to talk about more? Probably home audio? Almost, that's number two. Car audio wins with 44% of the vote. Home audio's 34% of the vote. TVs I'm in the, coming in third place at 15%. Cameras at 5%. Uh, and so, yeah, we will take note of that and certainly consider that as we're coming up with things to talk about on future Crutchfield Lives. Uh, the next one will be in about two weeks. Uh, so uh, two weeks from tonight, uh, today, Thursday at four o'clock in two weeks. Uh, that's when you should expect to see me back with some hope, hopefully some new guests, some new products, new stuff to talk about. Hopefully I'll be able to answer some questions for you. Uh, and uh, buddy, thanks for coming in and joining me today. Thank you, it was fun. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get this speaker uh, to play some music again, and that's gonna play us out. I'm training manager JR, the host of this show. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. That's the, that's the speaker for your ATV right there. I'm gonna turn some lights on, crank the music. We're gonna party and go home. Uh, have a wonderful day, have a wonderful weekend, and uh, we'll see you next time. Good news, it's gonna start again. <laughs> that song's just gonna start playing again. I don't know if they're playing it from that speaker or if they're gonna switch, but ready? There it is. Ah, Swiper, give us a clap. Thanks everybody. We're done. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you man.